from Chicago's number one news. You're watching ABC 7 Eyewitness News at 4.30. Breaking news, a CPS special, special education teacher at Kershaw Elementary in Inglewood faces federal charges for allegedly dealing ammunition and gun accessories. The complaint in federal court today states 53-year-old Brent Turpin supplied the ammo to felons and juveniles. Tropical Storm Harvey continuing to churn along the Gulf Coast, and that could have a big impact on your holiday weekend travel plans. And right now, that storm is moving inland, continuing to dump massive amounts of rain on the already flooded Texas and Louisiana coast. Harvey made its third landfall this morning. Flash flood watch is now in effect all the way to Tennessee and Florida. At least 19 people have died in this storm since it first struck. Rescue teams racing to pull others out of danger. So far, they've responded to 13 thousand rescues but some are catching a break houston's main airport just reopened for travelers within the last half hour the impact of harvey will still be felt for days and months to come and that includes the upcoming labor day holiday weekend eyewitness news reporter michelle gallardo is live in the south loop today with more on how harvey could affect your plans michelle Judy and Rob, you know what we're talking about here, right? It is higher gas prices. You know, usually this time of year, those prices start to come down as the summer comes to an end. But with the hurricane and distribution and production being interrupted, prices at the pump going up and will continue to do so for at least the next couple of weeks. I actually noticed it was two ninety nine. dollars Like, I've never seen that have in a long time. That's right, $2.99 a gallon at the BP gas station in the South Loop today. A significant increase coming over the last few days, mostly as a result of Hurricane Harvey, which has shut down 25% of U.S. refining capacity. Last time I filled up, it was like two sixty. dollars Okay, so it has gone up it, for like uh, 40 cents. The timing couldn't be worse. With the Labor Day weekend fast approaching, it's one of the largest travel holidays of the year. It's the third largest in the summer. Uh, and historically, we're going to see about 35 million people across the United States uh, travel this holiday weekend. But will the higher gas prices impact holiday travel? AAA says no, at least not for those of us in the Chicago area, most of whom will be traveling by car. For those traveling by air, Houston's two largest airports are reopening on a limited basis today, which is important since George Bush Intercontinental is a big hub. But at this point, the impact might be mostly to the airlines themselves. United expected to take a $265 million hit, the result of thousands of canceled flights over the last few days. As for gas prices, how much they continue to rise is still uncertain. Expect to see gas prices rise now through Labor Day and even after Labor Day. And all of this is really contingent on how quickly those refineries can get back online. Not news that anybody wants to hear, but at this point, certainly inevitable experts telling us they hope those prices will begin to stabilize within the next week. Until then, however, motorists need to expect to be paying a few more dollars at the pump. Live in the South Loop, by Michelle Gallardo, ABC7, Eyewitness News. Back to the studio. Okay, Michelle, thank you. And the flooding isn't the only problem for people living through the devastation in Texas. The Texas Attorney General says he's already received over 600 reports of price gouging, among them photos of a case of water for sale at Best Buy for $42. Best Buy is apologizing, telling ABC News it doesn't even sell cases of water. Officials in Texas say offenders can face fines of up to $20,000 per offense and up to a quarter of a million dollars if a victim is 65 or older. Our parent company, Walt Disney, and sister station KTRK in Houston are donating $1 million to the American Red Cross. And we're also hosting a day of giving telethon tomorrow to help with the disaster relief efforts in Texas. You can go to abc7chicago.com or the ABC7 Chicago News app for more information. And if you'd like to make a $10 donation to the Red Cross right now. All you have to do is text Harvey to 90999. And don't miss a 2020 news special, City Underwater. We'll get an intimate look of the crisis in Houston. That's tonight right here on ABC 7 starting at 9 o'clock. Here at home, another nice day across the Chicago area. How's the rest of the week and your holiday weekend shaping up? Yeah, meteorologist Cheryl Scott is here.
here with your ABC7 AccuWeather forecast, Cheryl. Well, a nice day today with temperatures finally near average. Live Doppler 7 max right now coming in quiet. We are dry and we're not anticipating any rain in the next one to two hours. But later tonight, that will change. Temps right now, upper 70s and low 80s, a little bit cooler here along the lakefront. As we head into the overnight hours, we'll see our temperatures starting to drop and our wind shifting in from the north northeast. That's going to keep us very cool tomorrow. We do have a cold front moving through, so highs tomorrow only near 70. Now there's that front with that moisture just up to the north of us. This front skirts on by. Little to work with, but a nice little line there of some showers and storms to the north. So right now we are quiet, but later tonight after 8, 9 o'clock, we'll start to see some of that rain push into our far northern counties. For those of you, Lake McHenry close to the state line, closer to 9 o'clock. Then overnight, just some scattered showers expected. We leave an isolated sprinkle or two for the first half of the day tomorrow. Then we clear out Thursday night into Friday. So for tomorrow, highs near 70, below average for our Friday. And then we'll see warmer temperatures. But what about the weekend? Any rain? We'll cover that and the latest track on Harvey if it has any impacts with us here at home. Rob? Show that flooding in Texas and all too real reminder of the problems the village of Algonquin and other suburban areas were dealing with just last month. Many areas still recovering tonight. For more on that story, here's ABC 7's Karen Jordan. Summertime is prime time for the Broken Ore Marina Bar and Grill in Port Barrington. Its location on a beautiful stretch of the Fox River can draw up to 3,500 people in a weekend. We were having a record year till the floods hit and pretty much had to start all over again after we recovered from it. Last month's record floods hit right in the middle of the Broken Oars high season. Six of the business's seven acres were underwater, but they managed to stay open. Our gas pump was underwater, our piers were underwater, and most of our seating areas were underwater, so we had to just kind of roll with the punches and move tables as we went along. Dedicated customers helped the Broken Oars sandbag, then dry out and clean up once the water receded. Miss Haber calls it a brutal three weeks. That's why she says her heart goes out to people people in Texas and Louisiana trying to survive Tropical Storm Harvey. We were fighting to save our homes and our businesses, but those people are fighting to save their lives. The village of Algonquin has weathered the record floods. Normal flood stage is nine and a half feet. We are over uh, 13 feet. Village assistant manager Mike Cambera says residents came together to help in whatever way was needed, much like what's happening now in Houston. It's heart shattering. You really see that on TV. It's hard to believe and just even knowing, you know, the much larger scale that Houston, Texas, Texas, Louisiana are dealing with. Cambera says the village of Algonquin is standing by ready to send whatever resources it can to help the people of Houston. In Algonquin, Karen Jordan, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. A former suburban teacher now pleading guilty to public indecency following an I-team investigation. Today, a Lake County judge sentenced Charles Ritz to two years of probation for an incident where he exposed himself to former students while he was a teacher in Lake Bluff back in 1985. The, first, uh, the case first came to light when former students told the I-team about the incident last fall. Chuck Gowdy and the I-team will have more about today's hearing coming up on Eyewitness News at 6. Police in Hobart searching for the man they they held up a gas station. They need your help. Newly released surveillance photos show the suspect. Take a look. Police say he demanded cash from a gas station attendant last night in the 3200 block of West 37th Avenue. Witness says he never showed a weapon but said he had one. He was last seen driving off in a dark Volkswagen with an Indiana-covered bridge plate number of FD2R. And school starts Tuesday in Chicago, and now three more schools are being added to the Safe Passage program. Shields Elementary, Shields Middle School, and Harold Washington Elementary will now have passing guards stationed along the walk to school. The program serves more than 75,000 children with 145 Safe Passage schools across the city. Mayor Rahm Emanuel joining CPS officials and police officers at a back-to-school rally. Our attendance at our schools, even though citywide it's record highs, it's the highest on the Safe Passage routes. Yeah. Officials say crime along Safe Passage routes has decreased by 32 percent since 2012. Governor Bruce Rauner is expected to sign the new education funding bill into law tomorrow. It comes after months of fighting on both sides of the aisle in Springfield. 
For the latest, here's our Craig Wall. Craig? Rob, Governor Bruce Rauner was touring downstate schools today talking about the legislation. He was also touting the part of the bill that provides tuition tax credits, which will help lower-income families have the choice to send their kids to private schools if they want. That was a portion of the bill that he got passed with the help of Cardinal Blaise Supich, who today told me he was grateful for what lawmakers worked out. Cardinal Blaise Supich celebrated Mass and then dedicated the new Mary of Mount Carmel Garden at Carmel High School in Mundelein. But he was also celebrating the new education funding bill that could end up helping the Archdiocese, which has had to close many schools in recent years. I think it will have an impact, a positive impact. Uh, but, of course, there are schools of other denominations. There are Jewish schools. There are other private schools as well. And uh, this is about families and it's about children. The $75 million tuition tax credit program program would be funded by private donations and is expected to provide scholarships to about 6,000 students around the state. At Carmel High School, tuition is about 11000 a year, a cost too high for some families who might want to send their kids there. The school president said the new funding bill could be a game changer. It means opportunities for students uh, that normally wouldn't have opportunities. Uh, it gives students uh, other options, choices. Nobody's going to force anybody to come to one school over another because of this bill. During his downstate school tour, Governor Rauner met with students and praised the compromise legislation. He also downplayed a possible court challenge to the tax credit program. There are different points of view on different issues. Um, these you know, Coming up with um, bipartisan compromise that fundamentally changes a system, you know, there's always going to be folks who would resist pieces of that. Today, Mayor Rahm Emanuel danced around the part of the funding bill that would allow Chicago public schools to raise another $120 million for pensions through a property tax hike. I don't take this lightly and the burden, nor do the taxpayers, but we are here to fix what people left behind because they passed the buck. The governor is expected to sign the education funding bill here in Chicago tomorrow afternoon. It was interesting to see his demeanor today now that this legislation has been worked out. There was no partisan comments, and it seemed to be kind of falling in line with what lawmakers were saying. They hope yesterday that after all this was worked out that maybe we can get a little more compromise happening in Springfield. We'll have to see about that. We should hope. Right. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Craig. Yep. A new CTA station will open tomorrow in the Loop. It is located at Washington and Wabash along Jewelers Row. The L stop will serve brown, orange, purple, pink, and green line trains. As many as 13,000 passengers will move through the station every day. The current Wabash and Randolph station will stay open until September 3rd before being closed and torn down. New warning about a popular pet and a potential health risk. And comedian Kathy Griffin taking her apology to the president back. Later, mega church pastor Joel Olstein on why he waited until just now to open his church to flood victims.